life update. It's 5.31 a.m. It's just getting bright outside. And the pygmies have been up all night drinking, smoking, and dancing around the fire, singing their songs. I, I feel like I'm dreaming right now. I cannot explain to you <laughs> what is happening, but I can't make this stuff up. What's up everyone? Today I'm going to introduce you to the humble life of the pygmy tribe in the Central African Republic. See, I'm simply fascinated by how people on our planet live, from the remote tribes of the Philippines, to the Eskimos of Greenland, to the indigenous settlers of the Amazon. For me, observing these unique cultures is like hitting the refresh button on life since I spend most of my time in big cities. It's a gentle reminder that humanity everywhere is beautiful. The incredible continent of Africa is without question the most diverse continent and is home to the majority of the world's most remote tribes, such as those in the Omo Valley of Ethiopia and the Himbas of northern Namibia. But in today's story, I will be taking you deep inside the Central African Republic for something even more special. Scattered around the dense tropical forests of Central Africa are an ethnic group called the Pygmies. About 900,000 of them in total can be found mostly in Gabon, Cameroon, the DR Congo, and right here in Central African Republic. The Pygmies are known to have an intimate relationship and connection with the forest because it's been their beloved home for centuries upon centuries. I wanted to spend a full 24 hours with the Pygmies to really immerse myself in their way of life. So my friends and I took a long road trip southwest of Bangui to a very remote area of the country. We're somewhere in southwestern Central African Republic and uh, we're in the middle of the forest and we're about to get dropped off to hang out with the Pygmies for 24 hours. Uh, I have no idea what to expect but it's going to be a hell of a journey. We parked our car when the dirt road ended, picked up some locals who know the area and the dialect, and walked some two hours through thick forest. I nearly gave up, it was so challenging and humid. We're walking for like an hour and a half, so I lose energy. Oh my god. We're just in the middle of nowhere, I can't believe there's people living in the forest. Yeah, pygmies live there. There's nothing around here except for tall trees. <laughs> <laughs> and then, out of the clear blue, like seriously in the middle of nowhere, we arrived. Hi. We just walked seven kilometers? Seven kilometers. Wow. The pygmies live a simple, stress-free life, which involves gathering fruit, harvesting spices, and hunting game like gazelles. What is your role in the community? He's like the chief here. He's the chief. So how many um, people live in, in this area, in this part of the forest? We uh, okay. There are 200 people. 200? Pygmies, yeah. Amazing. Talk about like the, the general life here. Like. From 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., they used to go in the forest down there to fish and to hunt. Where I'm from, everybody's always stressed and in big cities, people live stressful life. So here, do you have to worry about anything? They call. He say, everywhere you can get stress. When he's not able to feed his uh, kids, he can get some stress and pressure. But what he do want for his community is some kind of school and hospital and pure water. They live one of the simplest lives that humans can live, with no touch of modernity except maybe their hand-me-down clothes. They have no phones, no cars, no electricity, no internet, no TV, absolutely no connection to the outside world. They've also never left this forest, and while that may sound bizarre to you, they dance, they smile, and from what I'm seeing, they have a great life. Have you ever left here to go into town, or you always stay here? Never. 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 So his whole life has been here. All life is here. Does he have any interest and does he ever want to check out the other the other side? He said he doesn't care about uh, what is going on this side. He doesn't care at all. He doesn't care at all. He's happy here, he used to hunt here, eat here, live here, that's all. Have you ever met someone like me before? <laughs> have you ever had a visitor into and your house? Like that is it's uh, it's first time to see someone like you. Yeah, what do you think about this place? It's quite beautiful, uh, natural, it's fine. 
for our friendlies, yeah. And we're good, man. I feel good. If we took these people to Bangui, what do you think they would, what would they do? It depends. As for the, the elder one, I, I think that they won't like it. Because they grew up here, they were born here and they feel comfortable here. And the youngest one, they might want to stay over there. So they will discover light, music, how things are going. Genetically speaking, the pygmies are among the world's most unique people because of their height. On average, pygmies are 35% shorter than the standard human being, and anthropologists still don't know why this happens. So you're from Bangui, and look at the height difference. You can see inside their houses are tiny, I'm taller than the roof. They live in makeshift homes built from trees. Their earrings are twigs. They have their own language, which is only spoken, not written. They tattoo their faces for beauty. On your face you have these amazingly beautiful tattoos. How did you get them and what are they, what's the purpose of them? She did it with traditional razors. And what's the reason that she does it? Uh, it's for beauty. Oh, for for beauty. beauty. Yeah. Well, I think it's very beautiful. They have no material possessions. Every day is the same. What do you enjoy the most about life? You say what he wants the most is just working, hunting, cultivating. That's his joy. He likes working a lot. That's what he wants. What I've learned from speaking to the pygmies is that they don't ever want to be in a civilization. So do you ever have any interest in going to a town or do you just want to stay here? Oh, so singular. Uh, he's not very interesting about going in town. He is comfortable here. So you caught a gazelle? And yeah. how many hours did it take you to catch it? 30 minutes. 30 Four, minutes? Yeah. 40 minutes. How do you know where to find it or do you just look at random places? Put them some traps that catch them and then after you come just to shoot. How often does he, does he uh, do this? What are you doing? Well, he's focused on cutting it. He used to do it every day. Every day. Ask him what's his favorite uh, meat to eat. He said that today he's lucky. That's his favorite food. Really? Yeah. He said that uh, he hope you are not uh, too afraid to watch him cutting the gazelle like that. I'm not afraid. <laughs> he said okay. Well, it took him about 20 minutes from sticking his hand in the gazelle and skinning it out until it's almost ready on the fire and it's burnt to a crisp. Pretty impressive actually. He's got it down to a science the chief here. So it's almost dark which means I gotta shut off the camera because there's no light in here. But yeah, we're gonna sleep here so we need to figure out where we're gonna sleep because there's a lot more people here than I thought and there's not enough houses so I think we're gonna sleep on the dirt floor. Really curious to see what happens here during the night because I have no idea. So it's time to sleep and there's so many mosquitoes that are just destroying me right now and I don't want to get malaria. So they have a mosquito net and they're now drilling holes in the sand with sticks to uh, make the bed for me and then I'm going to sleep over that. Ça va? Ça va. All right, good night. <laughs> Life update, it's 5.31 a.m. It's just getting bright outside, and the pygmies have been up all night drinking, smoking, and dancing around the fire, singing their songs. I, I feel like I'm dreaming right now. I cannot explain to you what is happening, but I can't make this stuff up.
Just to reiterate, it's 7 in the morning and we are in the middle of the jungle and the pygmies have been dancing non-stop for about 8 hours now. It's such a beautiful thing to witness. Oh my god, I'm so happy that I came here. Life is amazing all around the world. This is just one small example of it. They drank more than 20 liters of alcohol. How do you know? The bottles are wrong. Yeah, it's empty. I found the smoking corner. These old men rolling up some... Wow. Hey, go! <laughs> oh wow, that's how he likes it. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Ça va? <coughs> This is the bag. Yeah, it's definitely weed. I don't know where they get it from. Oh. Bon, bon, bon. bon. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I have no idea what this is, but I'm gonna try it. It definitely tastes like weed. <laughs> it's definitely weed. <laughs> I don't know where they get it from. So we're just chilling, everybody's stoned. <laughs> so crazy how like anywhere you are in the world people are the same so cool what a day what an experience the last 24 hours of my life have just been magnificent the pygmies are so cool and they were so happy to see me i felt very welcomed and comfortable at all times unlike my experience in the omo valley of ethiopia which felt like a tourist trap this is honestly truly one of the best travel experiences i've ever had just to wake up in the middle of the forest to 50 pygmies drunk dancing around a fire enjoying life and welcoming me in. I can't think of a better way to, to, to spend a day. The main reason why I travel is because I'm so curious on how other people live and, and it's just a beautiful thing to experience. I'm so happy that I came here. Hope you guys enjoyed this story as much as I had fun making it. And good morning from the Central African Republic. See you later guys. Do they have information about the outside world? Like, I'm from the USA. Like, does he has he heard about that, or does he know anything about America? He's never heard of it before. No, never. But he understands that, like, I'm clearly from a different country. So, because I I look different. Okay. He said that he's happy to see you because you are different from them and if a different people is coming from your country to here he's very happy to see that you want to see them and you want to to see how they are living it's it's, it's making him very happy awesome thank you so much is there anything is there anything else you want to say about about you or, or your community uh, at the end, all he can say is that uh, thank you for coming here to visit him, to take some pictures. He's very happy to see that people want to see him and all his community. That's so amazing. Thank you so much. Merci. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> that was a great interview, man. Yeah, Thank you so much. Uh... <laughs> tell him, tell him that he's a champion. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.